Hey there, Eli coming at you again from OSA Carpentry here today to give you another episode of What is a Coral? Today we're going to talk about one of my personal favorites and that is the family of Favias. Favia doesn't necessarily cover just a single genus, at least when you get into the hobby aspect of things. Whereas some of these corals might actually belong to the genus Favia, there are at least dozens of different genuses that would make up what we typically call Favias in the aquarium setting. This little array in front of me offers about 15 or so different types of favia, and they come in all sorts of different colors, all sorts of different shapes, different polyp structures, and I think that's one of the really cool things about these corals. Care for these favia corals, or members of that favia family, is gonna be pretty consistent across the board. Generally, they're gonna want moderate to lower light, moderate to lower flow, and generally do best on the bottom half of the aquarium. A lot of times, I like to place favias in my tank personally, somewhere on the sand bed or somewhere very low on the rock work so that they're not taking up valuable real estate where I could put other corals. As long as these are getting a decent amount of light, and again, that doesn't have to be very strong or intense lighting, and as long as they're getting enough flow to keep sand and detritus from settling on them, they tend to do quite well for most people. These are what we would consider an LPS stony coral or a large polyp stony coral, which is evident by those large polyps that you see within each one. A lot of times these are arranged in a pattern that as they grow out, they start to resemble a brain. So for that reason, these are another coral that people tend to refer to as brain corals. And most of the time they're gonna resemble little round pucks, almost circular in size. Whereas sometimes you get some that form more of a maze or a track pattern, which you could call a maze fabia or a maze brain coral. However, they are all going to grow very similarly. And as they grow, they will encrust the rock work or encrust over the sand if you were to put them on the sand bed, but they do grow outward as well. So these are what you would consider a massive coral, which is a designation that means as it grows outward horizontally, it's actually growing upward as well. Generally, once you get a good sized colony of favia going, it will be almost round in shape, resembling maybe a softball in appearance as they grow out and they do put a large stony skeleton down below them as they grow. Most members of that Favia family are pretty aggressive corals and what I mean by this is they do tend to have sweeper tentacles that they can sting other corals with. with certain strains or certain types of Favia, those tentacles are only gonna be an inch or so long at best. Some others will get a little bit longer sweeper tentacles and generally you're only going to see those at nighttime or perhaps after you feed the tank as the coral is sensing some food in the water column and will send those sweepers out to investigate. For that reason, it also makes sense to place them far enough away from each other or far enough away from other corals for that matter, just so they are not stinging the surrounding corals. And even members of the Favia family don't necessarily always play well together. So placing them with adequate room around each other is definitely helpful in making sure that you have success with both of them. As I mentioned with those sweeper tentacles and them kind of investigating when food hits the tank, a lot of Favias do appreciate being fed. With these large polyps, a lot of them are capable of eating some larger meaty foods such as mysis shrimp, brine shrimp, or the like. They also do appreciate a little dustier or cloudier foods such as Fritz Coral Max and amino acids. And these generally help to boost the colors of those coral polyps. Also helps to make sure that those polyps maintain a nice fluffy appearance. And sometimes if you get into the habit of feeding them, they will just overall appear a little bit bulkier. You might see those feeder tentacles a little more often, and they just offer a little different appearance if they are well fed in the aquarium. And it's as simple as turning the flow down for these guys and target feeding them, whether you're feeding mysis, whether you're feeding coral max, and they generally will pull those particles inward and each individual mouth will digest pieces that they catch. So it's pretty fun to watch. If you do get the chance, it's, it's definitely worth taking a look at your Favia corals eating. I think it's a really cool part about these corals. As for colors, Favias come in just about every color under the sun. A lot of times the cheaper Favias are going to be somewhere in the green or brownish hues, but you also see blues, reds, yellows, purples, whole bunch of different types of colors. Sometimes you even get some that are almost grafted in appearance and as they grow out, they will express different colors and different polyps, which is also a neat thing about some of those corals. If there is a color that you had in mind, there is probably a favia out there to suit that color, which is pretty cool. Definitely something that's collectible as long as you have a decent amount of space to provide for each one of these. And again, as I mentioned earlier about polyp structure, a lot of your favias are gonna have almost a round appearance per each polyp, but some of them do have almost like a pentagon shape to them, or some do form those maze brain patterns like I talked about earlier, 
where there'll be one coral light with a whole bunch of little mouths in like a straight pattern, which is just another cool appearance as well. There are definitely a whole bunch of different options to fit your desired shape for these corals. It's definitely something that's, that's pretty cool to uh, be able to check out the different varieties that you might see at aquarium shops. And as a stony coral too, definitely keep in mind those uh, big three parameters, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, make sure your salinity is nice and stable and make sure you're keeping up on water changes and these corals should do quite well for you. Definitely a beginner friendly coral, especially most of your varieties that have already been established in the strain and something really cool to add to a cool mixed reef aquarium. As always, thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Let us know in the comment section below if you have questions, maybe suggestions for future videos. And as always, keep fishing.